James and um, Prof. Um, Bragas. Um, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much um, for that um, recap. Okay, so this morning I will be sharing with you the last topic. Um, I think this is one of the important topics that I will be discussing throughout this um, um, training workshop on research advising and peer reviewing. Okay, can you allow me to share my PowerPoint presentation? Okay, so um, in this morning session, I will be discussing the peer reviewing process. And at the same time, I will be sharing also with you um, research publication and reputable journals. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, um, for this topic, um, I will be um, sharing with you my experience as a peer reviewer of several journals. And uh, of course, my experience in research publication in some of the top journals um, in business and social sciences. Okay, of course, um, as part of the academy and um, as part of the graduate school, um, one of the things that we also need to learn is how the review process happened, uh, particularly if our aim is basically publishing our research papers. Okay, peer review is basically a, a central process when we talk about research publication. And this is usually a tedious process because um, reviewers or evaluators assess our papers and try to examine whether um, our papers are, are suitable for a particular journal. Okay, so I will be discussing to you this morning um, the, the process of peer reviewing and at the same time how we can properly identify the right journal for us okay so in this presentation i will be um I'm taking the point of view of a reviewer being a reviewer of some journals so as of the moment i do peer review for asia pacific social science review so i am a reviewer of asia pacific social science review which is a scopus index journal managed by the la salle university and currently ranked q2 um, I'm also um, um, a regular reviewer of Sage Open, um, which is a journal that is managed by Sage. Um, so I, every now and then, I, I, I am given the opportunity to review papers um, that are submitted to this journal. And also recently, um, I was invited to do peer reviewing for the International Journal for Organizational Analysis by Emerald Publishing. Um, this is one of the top journals when we talk about organizational behavior. Okay, I also do review almost, I think, every month uh, at Journal of Marketing Analytics um, by Paul Grave. Um, so I, 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 I usually review um, topics on marketing and marketing analytics for this journal. Um, of course, um, De La Salle Uni uh, University Business and Economics Review. So I also review papers that are coming from De La Salle University, which is um, a De La Salle University Business and Economics Review, which is um, currently indexed in Scopus and currently ranked as Q3 journal. Okay, I also do review for advances in hospitality and tourism research, which is indexed in uh, Web of Science and uh, Web of Science, and at the same time, um, Scopus. Okay. So it is currently ranked Q3 in Scopus, and I think it is ranked Q2 in Web of Science. Okay. So I also do review for um, the International Journal of Management Education um, by Elsevier, which is one of the top journals in, 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 in the field of business. Okay. And at the same time, um, International Journal of um, Economics okay, and Management. Um, this is also a journal which is currently indexed in Scopus, um, ranked Q3 um, in, Sco uh, in Scopus and managed by University Putra Malaysia, um, one of the leading universities in Malaysia. Okay. Um, at the same time, I will also be sharing with you my experience in research publication. So some of my uh, some of my papers uh, can be uh, can uh, can be found in several journals, including, of course, Asia Pacific Social Science Review, Advances in Hospitality and Tourism Research, um, Journal of Science and Technology Policy Management. Um, Asian Geographer, my recent publication, which will be published, I think, first quarter of 2022, will be available at Asian Geographer um, by Taylor and Francis. Uh, my publication in International Journal of Economics and Management, um, Asian Academy of Management Journal. 
okay, and British Food Journal. So this, these are some of the journals where um, my papers can be found. And I will be sharing with you some tips and techniques on how I was able to publish my papers to these top journals. Okay. So let's start with the idea of research publication, Muna. So when we talk about research publication, of course, there are different avenues for us to publish our research paper. Um, the ECS, of course, is in-house journals. So for example, let's say a university uh, publishes um, um, their own journals. So tawag natin dyan in-house journals. So typically, they are much easier in terms of requirements. And at the same time, um, the level of acceptability or the percentage of acceptability the far of paper is high for in-house journals. Then we also have what we call local journals, which are published by scholarly association or higher education institutions. We also have what we call international journals, uh, both published uh, or which can be published rather by scholarly associations and by universities. And of course, here in the Philippines, our aim will always be um, publication, um, which are indexed in Scopus or Web of Science. Um, because here in the Philippines, and of course in other um, um, Asian um, um, Asian universities, um, Scopus and Web of Science are, are basically factors when we talk about quality research publication. Okay, So um, of course, our aim is to publish our research paper and as, as much as possible, try to target okay, the highest, which is publication in Scopus and Web of Science. Okay? Um, as I mentioned, there are two names now um, that are uh, very important to all academics today. We have Scopus and Clarivate Analytics Web of Science. Um, of course, you are quite familiar with Scopus every now and then, naririnig natin yan. And Clarivate Analytics is basically the new name of ISI Thomson Reuters. Okay, so Clarivate Analytics um, is the new um, owner of ISI Thomson Reuters, so pinangalan niyang Clarivate Analytics Web of Science. Okay, so these are the two biggest indexing companies and they are the, the most reputable, if I may say, okay, particularly for academics in Asia. Okay. So typically for Scopus, for instance, um, we can actually verify whether um, a particular journal is, is indexed in Scopus. Madali lang i-detect yan. So you simply type the name of the journal here. Then it will give you um, the result whether the, your target journal is currently indexed in Scopus. Um, number two, you can also uh, click this one. So there's a link in Scopus wherein you can download all those um, journals that are currently indexed okay, um, by, by Scopus, of course. Okay? Um, Scopus, by the way, is owned by Elsevier. Okay, so si Elsevier ang nagmamanage ng Scopus. And Scopus is currently used as a metric of quality education, particularly by, uh, by world university ranking organizations such as THE okay, or the Times Higher Education. Okay, so they use data or the, the database of Scopus to, to measure yung quality ng research publication ng mga different universities around the globe. And if you will be looking the parameters, they always use um, the data from Scopus. Okay, so if, for example, your target journal um, is a Scopus Index journal, and if you want to verify it, then you can go to this link, okay, and you can simply type the name of the journal or, okay, download the Scopus list source, uh, download Scopus source list so that you have the idea uh, on the current um, um, index journals um, under Scopus, okay? So ito yung importance ng, ng site ng Scopus. Number two, if for example, you want to know or if you want to check whether your target journal is indexed by Web of Science or our Clarivate Analytics, you can go to this link. Okay? So pwede mong pindutin ito, Master Journal List. In the Master Journal List, uh, makikita natin yung list ng lahat ng mga journals that are currently indexed by Web of Science. Or if you want to be very much specific, you can simply type the name of the journal here and it will give you the result whether the journal is currently indexed by Web of Science. Just be reminded that, for example, um, ang isang journal index siya ng Web of Science or maybe Scopus, hindi yan forever na naka-index sa Scopus and Web of Science. Today, um, Scopus and Web of Science are basically decluttering okay, their list because there are some journals that are currently indexed in Scopus and Web of Science that are considered predatory. 
Okay, so anong ginagawa ngayon ng Web of Science and Scopus? They are basically measuring um, the quality of the publisher and the journal. And in most cases, gumagawa sila ng tinatag nating discontinued list. When we say discontinued list, these are um, journals that are previously indexed by these two organizations, but now they were uh, delisted. Okay, simply because of issues of uh, publication. Okay, so example of this one is predatory. Um, in Scopus, uh, in Scopus, I think almost every quarter nag-check sila or nag-provide sila ng mga new list. Um, and every quarter, ang daming natatanggal from the list. Okay? Because um, there are some, as I mentioned, there are some index journals that are basically uh, behaving uh, behaving uh, as uh, predators. Okay? So it means um, they, they have predatory practices in, when it comes to research publication. So you really need to be um, updated with the list. Okay? So what is the difference of um, Scopus Index journals and Web of Science Index journals from the rest of the journals. Of course, not all journals are indexed in Scopus and Web of Science. It really takes time for a particular journal to be part of Scopus and Web of Science um, because as I mentioned, there's a parameter of quality. Okay, But what differentiates them from other journals? Um, of course, one that sets um, Web of Science and Scopus Index journals from the rest is the stringent peer review process. Okay, so when I say stringent peer review process, typically for top journals, lalo na yung mga rank Q1, Q2 journals, or even Q3 journals, they have stringent peer review process. Um, when we talk about stringent peer review process, it means they will really evaluate and examine the suitability of your paper to a particular journal. They will scrutinize whether the content are relevant. They will scrutinize the novelty of your topic and so on and so forth. And typically for the peer review process, they follow what we call the double blind review. Okay, so what is double blind review? Double blind review is the typical process of peer reviewing of a particular journal wherein a submitted paper will be sent to two reviewers and the reviewers has no uh, the reviewers have no idea okay of the name of the authors and at the same time their affiliation. Of course, ang reason bakit double blind ang pagre-review ngayon para walang mga biases. Okay, it's para na remove yung certain form ng ano ng ng biases sa pagre-review. So typically, ang mga reviewers, like for example, in my case, every time I receive a particular paper, tinatanggal nila yung name ng authors and at the same time yung affiliation, so that I don't have any idea sino yung nagsulat. Okay, um, so that is part of what we call the peer review process. Um, in Elsevier, ito yung typical process na ginagawa nila. And actually, most of the journals, they, they follow the same process, almost the same process. So typically, in the peer review process, we have what we call new submission. Okay? In the new submission, so for example, let's say you are an author, so you identify the particular journal as your target journal, okay, then you will be submitting now your paper, okay? So once you submit your paper, okay, so kapag nasubmit na yan, um, the paper will Will be first evaluated by the editor in chief. Yung tawag natin dyan, editorial review. Um, so your paper will be evaluated first by the editor in chief. Um, the editor in chief will, will look into one the suitability of your topic to the journal. So kailangan yung topic mo naka-align dun sa um, um, aim and purpose ng journal. Number two, the editor in chief also will initially evaluate your paper. Okay, so. Um, ang editor-in-chief um, will e evaluate your paper and once na na-accept, or for example, the editor-in-chief is okay with the topic, that would be the time that the paper will be sent to peer reviewer. Okay? Now, um, the editor-in-chief has what we call the power called editorial rejection. What does it mean when we say editorial rejection? It means bago pa dumating yung paper sa peer reviewer, pa possible na i-reject na ng editor-in-chief ang paper. Anong possible reason for the rejection? One, yung pinaka-common, hindi suitable yung topic okay, for the journal. Ibig sabihin, malayo yung topic mo for, for, for the aim and purpose of the journal. Number two, ito yung, um, I think, um, uh, biggest factor for editor-in-chief, yung novelty, yung pag-add ng value 
Mm-hmm. Okay? Kapag nakita ng editor-in-chief na similar lang yung paper mo with others, usually merong editorial rejection yan. So ang gagawin, hindi na ipapadaan yan sa peer reviewer, isa, i-email na kayo, sasabihin na rejected ang paper. Okay? So that is what we call editorial review. Okay? But for example, the editor-in-chief uh, finds your paper okay and suitable for the journal, then the editor-in-chief will forward your paper to peer reviewer. The peer reviewer, as I mentioned, typically they are two. Okay, most journals, they follow double-blind review. So the um, reviewer now is tasked okay, to review a particular paper. Okay, then um, they have a rubric. In the rubric, they will evaluate um, several um, uh, aspects of your paper based on the parameter set. Okay, and the reviewer will give you um, um, verdict. And the verdict can be, one, your paper is rejected. Number two, your paper is accepted with major revision. Your paper is accepted with minor revision. Number four, your paper is accepted with no revisions at all. Okay, so apat yung possible result ng peer, ng, uh, ng, uh, ng peer reviewer. So once, for example, let's assume your paper, the two reviewers have favorable results. Okay, yung verdict nila, let's say, um, accept with minor revision. Okay, so accept with minor revision, ang mangyayari ng- ngayon, yung journal, ibibigay niya sa author yung paper with the comments of the um, um, reviewer. So you will have now time to revise your paper. So depending yan sa journal kung gano'n kahaba ang binibigay nila for revision. There are journals that will require you only two weeks. There are journals that will require you for the revision ng one month. There are journals that will require you for have up to for the revision ng three months. So depending yan sa requirement ng journals. Okay. So once na binigay na yung paper sa inyo, so you need to do the necessary revision. And once you revise your paper, then you will be submitting again your paper to the editor. Okay, so typically ibabato mo ulit yan sa journal and the editor-in-chief now will evaluate whether your paper uh, or whether you complied with the requirements of the reviewer. Okay, if for example, if for example, your paper, um, even though you revise your paper accordingly, Um, and the editor-in-chief is not satisfied. So usually, ang gagawin ng editor-in-chief, ibabalik niya sa peer reviewer, okay, yung paper mo. And the peer reviewer will assess whether the paper, uh, whether you complied with the requirements of revision. Then, for example, let's say, um, okay naman sa dalawang peer reviewer, ibabalik nila ulit sa editor and the editor now will accept your paper for possible publication. So once your paper is accepted, the journal will will email you and the join uh, the, the email will contain the possible date of publication of your paper okay so that is the typical process ng tinatawag nating peer review so if you will be looking at it um, it is a tedious process okay paulit-ulit yan particularly in this part so based on my experience typically dito kami medyo natatagalan lagi in this part Okay, because there are some situations wherein the peer reviewer will send um, the comment to the author or authors, then they will comply with the revision, but the, the editor-in-chief is not satisfied and the peer reviewer are not satisfied with the revisions done. So typically, dyan umahaba okay, yung process. That's the reason um, if, for example, you are targeting really top journals, when I say top journals, these are reputable journals, um, typically matagal ang kanilang review process. And um, there are some cases that your paper will be published after a year pa. At most sa akin, based on my experience, meron ako isang paper na na-publish after two years okay, because of this review process. Okay? So it means... Um, Um, tedious, okay, or stringent, okay, yung, yung process ng peer review. Why? Because what are they after is basically quality of research paper, okay? So quality of our research paper, okay? So if you will be looking at it, this is the typical process of peer review, okay? So um, as I mentioned, if you will be looking your journey towards publication, hindi naman talaga siya madali. But kapag nasanay ka, mas madali na siya. Of course, for for novice researchers or mga published authors, typically um, sa initial stage natin, mahirap talaga siya. Feeling mo, you will be demotivated, especially if you will be uh, receiving emails that your paper um, was rejected. Okay? 
um, because your paper will undergo scrutiny by these reviewers, by this editor in chief before your paper will be accepted for possible publication. Okay, and as I always mention, um, do not be afraid to be rejected because um, that is part of our um, of our um, life as an uh, uh, as an as part of the academe and as a researcher. Because as a, as a world of research, um, you will always you will you will experience rejection. Even for example, those um, researchers na talaga nakakapag-publish na or mga tinatay nating seasoned researchers, they also experience rejection, and that is a normal process in research publication okay um, um if you will be looking um the the, the peer review process made as i mentioned it is quite stringent but we really need to take a step um, um towards publishing our paper let reviewers review our papers in order for us to know what are our weaknesses as a researcher Usually, kasi for reviewers, we try to identify ano yung weakness ng paper. Um, we also identify sometimes, or in most cases, um, yung tinatawag natin strengths ng paper. Okay? Um, para nakikita natin, saan ba tayo mahina? Saan usually mahina yung content ng paper natin? So, dyan na nakikita yung quality okay, ng ating research article. Okay? So some important checklists. Um, this is based on my experience as a researcher. Okay, so ito yung mga kailangan natin tandaan. If we want to publish our research paper in top journals, particularly top journals, index in Scopus and Web of Science. Okay, so number one, as I always mention, novelty of topic. Okay, um, this is the reason why um, in my day one presentation, I mentioned that um, we really need to identify properly our topic, something that will add value okay, in the field. Um, and we mentioned that we can only identify that by looking at the gap in the literature. Reviewers will always look whether you were able to address a particular gap in the literature because the, that is where novelty comes in. Okay, um, journals will always look for topics that are quite novel, topic that will really add value. Okay, so as I mentioned, kung paulit-ulit yung topic at pareho lang kayo ng result ng previous um, pub, um, uh, previous papers, uh, so typically kung ang target mo top journals, usually hindi ina-accept yan. Um, nagkakaroon tayo ng editorial rejection on that, on that aspect. Okay, number two, um, paper content, the content of your paper. Of course, um, in most cases, um, ang reviewer, they are looking for a good introduction. As I mentioned, a good introduction will lead the reader um, um, to a particular direction. And when we talk about direction, that is the purpose of the study. Uh, personally, as a reviewer, kapag nalilito ako sa introduction, um, usually ang, ang comment ko na kagad dyan, major revision na. Why? Because the introduction will 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 give yung initial impression kasi ng, ng reader. So kailangan you need to guide properly your readers. Okay? Sa introduction pa lang. Number two, typically, ito yung usual na um, dilemma or problem na na-experience ng mga authors sa paper content, yung literature review. Okay? As I mentioned, may purpose ang literature review. We do not simply summarize prior studies. Instead, we need to justify our constructs, justify our research hypothesis, explain properly our frameworks. Okay? So, kailangan properly justified lahat yan, properly explained. Okay? Because as I mentioned, research is a scientific process. Okay? And as reviewers, usually ang inahanap namin is dapat maganda yung pagkakasulat, scientific yung pagkakasulat, justified ang mga constructs, justified ang kanyang framework, justified ang kanyang mga hypothesis. Okay? So it has something to do with the content. Okay? Um, number three is basically, this is also an important thing, appropriateness of methodology. I think for our last two days, I always emphasize the importance of research methodology. There must be an alignment from the type from the title of your paper down to your statement of the problem or your objective of the study down to your um, um, research design down to your statistical treatment if your paper is quantitative. Okay? So kailangan naka-align lahat yung methodology natin and you were able to justify well why that methodology is the suitable methodology for that kind of topic or for that kind of paper. Okay? Because sometimes we, we neglect these small things. Like, for example, we simply identify, this is my research design. Okay? Then you simply define, but you did not justify why is that the appropriate research design. 
Mm-hmm. Okay? So, kailangan justify din yan. Um, sometimes, we simply identify these are my statistical tests that, I will, uh, that, uh, will be, uh, that was utilized um, in this paper. Then, you did not discuss, for example, why they are the suitable. Okay? So, it is all about appropriateness. Okay? Um, there are some situations, meron ako na experience na ang kanyang sinabing statistical test, hindi ka pareho ng results. For example, let's say this is just an example. Sinabi niya ANOVA ang gagamitin niya tapos T-test ang ginamit sa ano, sa results. So if you're going to look at it, those things, uh, those small things um, can can add dun sa probability na marireject ang paper. So that's number three. Number four, they will be looking at the research contribution. I think in our day one, we discussed um, a, a lot with research contribution. And when we talk about research contribution, there are two research contributions that we are looking as reviewers. One, the theoretical contribution. Anong contribution mo sa, sa theory? Number two, practical contribution. Okay, what are the contribution or what is the contribution of your study in the field? So for example, let's say your topic has something to do with social media marketing, then what is the practical contribution of your study? Okay, so you need to properly explain that. You need to properly um, discuss those things in your paper. Okay. So yung research contribution contribution is very vital. If you still remember, um, in our day one discussion, we emphasize the importance of what we call identifying the research gap. Because through identification of the research gap, we will have an initial idea of what would be the possible contribution of our study. Okay? And some miscellaneous, okay, um, grammar, your writing style, your the citations. This is very important. To tell you honestly, there are journals kapag mali ang citations mo or kulang ang citations mo, hindi nagmamatch yung in-text citation with your references, they reject papers. Anong reason? They did not comply with the requirement of the journal. Okay? So if you will be looking at it, um, kapag nag-publish tayo or if we, we have um, the intention to publish our paper, we really need to check everything. Okay? We really need to check everything before submitting. Of course, um, as much as possible, we want that our paper will be accepted for publication. And that is not an easy task, particularly if you are talking about reputable journals. Okay? Um, reputable journals, they mean business. Okay? It may, when I say they mean business, they are quite serious with research publication. Okay? So um, we really need um, to properly take note of this checklist. Um, these five things are the usual five things that I experience sa aking publication and sa pag-review ng research paper. So typically, these are the five things that reviewers will look for in a particular paper. Okay? Now, if you still remember also yesterday, I emphasized um, the importance of IMRAD. Okay? IMRAD is the typical format of journals. So if you will be publishing, for example, the thesis or dissertation of our students, okay, um, kailangan i-transform natin yan sa IMRAD. Kaya if you still remember also in our day one, I mentioned at saan part ba ng thesis or dissertation, yung introduction, yung method, yung results and discussion. So kailangan alam din natin. Why? Because once na natapos yung thesis and dissertation, then we need to transform the thesis and dissertation into IMRAD. Okay? Um, IMRAD is concise. Okay, um, concise, um, um, it is shorter in terms of the number of words compared with the traditional thesis or dissertation. Okay, so it is a must also for us to properly um, know um, kung paano nagsusulat ng IMRAD, not only the, the, the format of the thesis or the dissertation. Okay, now, um, as I mentioned, sa pagre-review ng paper, ang usual na tinitingnan natin is introduction. Okay? So, let's have a quick recap lang ng, ng introduction. If you still remember in our day one, I mentioned, sa introduction, kailangan inverted triangle. Start with general down to specific. Okay? So, this was um, also the example that I gave sa ating previous days ng ating training workshops and let's try to identify kung paano ba dapat isusulat kung ganito yung topic mo. So this topic or this this paper is entitled The Mediating Effect of Employee Engagement on the Relationship of Transformational Leadership and Intention to Quit Evidence from Local Colleges in Pampanga, Philippines. Okay? So as I mentioned, um, sa IMRAD format, general to specific, um, ang reviewer will look whether you were able to properly um, um, 
um, you you were able to properly identify the direction of your paper. Okay? So, kailangan may direction ang paper mo. Okay? So, typically, ang format natin for introduction, because the introduction includes literature review, typically, we have um, maybe three, four, five paragraphs for the introduction. Then, you need to introduce your research framework and hypothesis. Then, your research framework and hypothesis is divided into two. You have your research hypothesis and your research framework. Okay? So, what do I mean with this one? So, assuming, let's say, this is your topic. Okay, this is the title of your paper. Ano yung usual na introduction mo? As I mentioned, give first your, your reader general concepts. So kung ang topic mo has something to do with employee engagement, transformational leadership, and intention to quit, then your initial paragraph should be maybe general concepts on, maybe for example, importance of human resource in the organization, um, the role of motivation, HR as a competitive advantage, the role of leadership. So give first your readers general concepts, okay, general ideas muna. Then followed by an explanation of your three variables. So explain mong mabuti um, yung transformational leadership, intention to quit, and employee engagement. Then ipapasok mo na dito yung hypothesis development. Okay, then of course, yung last part ng introduction mo will be your research framework or your proposed model. Okay, so typically this is the structure. Okay, um, in this structure, you will see um, kasama na dito yung um, ating review of related literature. Kasi sa IMRED format, ang introduction natin kasama ang review of related literature. So in this example, yung initial paragraphs natin will serve as the introduction and the rest serve as part of the literature review. Okay? So kung titignan natin, ito yung typical format na tinitignan ng mga reviewers. So if I am a reviewer at na-review ko, for example, ang paper nyo, tinitignan ko, number one, maganda ba ang introduction? Uh, nakapagbigay ba siya ng tamang direction? Na-identify ba niya ang gap in the literature? Na-address ba niya yung reason bakit kailangan niya adjust yung gap sa literature? Then I will be looking whether you were able to properly justify your theoretical underpinning, your uh, your constructs that you utilize in your study, were you, were you able to properly justify your research hypothesis, and were you able to present well your proposed model or your research framework, okay? So these are the things that um, reviewers will look for sa inyong mga papers, okay? So just to give you a uh, mas detailed okay, the explanation based on our example. So as I mentioned, ito yung magiging format ng ating introduction based on the topic. And if you will be looking at this one, once you discuss the three um, um, constructs of the study, dito mo na rin pinapasok yung theoretical underpinning or theoretical framework natin. Okay, as I mentioned, your theoretical underpinning or your theoretical theoretical framework, they serve as the foundation of our research. Okay? Um, at the same time, if you will be explaining, for example, your constructs of the study, of course, you need to properly explain them. Um, concentrate on your research construct. Look for published papers that explain transformational leadership, intention to quit, and employee engagement. Because you need to give your reader the idea okay, of what these constructs are all about. Then for the hypothesis development, you need to justify and explain your research hypothesis. Okay, and of course, your, your, your framework, which is also your conceptual framework, will serve as your research framework or your proposed model. Okay, so typically natatapos ang introduction with the research framework or a proposed model. Okay, so that those are the things na tinitignan ng mga reviewers sa ating mga papers. Okay, now, um, that is introduction. Sa method section naman, anong inahanap ng reviewer? Again, yung diniscuss ko din last time. They will be looking for the participants of the study, um, the in research instrument that, that you utilized, and the data analysis. So here, they will be looking whether you were able to justify na yun ang tamang respondents. They will be looking on your sampling technique. They will be looking on the calculation of your sample size and sufficiency of the sample size. There are some authors tinatago nila yung details on um, some uh, sampling technique and calculation of sample size. Okay? Um, sometimes they will just simply tell in their paper ang um, the sample size was 400. Okay? Ganun lang nila sinasabi. 
Mm-hmm. Okay? Um, usually, kapag ganun, ang, ang comment ng reviewer, how did you calculate your sample size? What is your basis for calculating or for coming up with 400 respondents? Is 400 sufficient as a sample size? Something like that. Okay? So, kailangan very clear sa paper natin, sino yung participants? Bakit sila ang participants? What is our sampling technique? How did we calculate our sampling technique? Because we really need to prove that um, we did uh, we did a rigor uh, we we did um, a rigor process of calculating and estimating our sample size. Okay, so that's one for participants of the study. For research instrument, naman usually ang inahanap namin yan is number one. Um, in-adapt ba yan with O, adapt with A, or nang develop ng new instrument. We are looking for the sources ng no, kanyang ano, adoption. For example, if the authors adapt with O, then tinitignan namin saan galing. And at the same time, we, 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 we always look for the validity and reliability. Okay? So usually kapag missing yan, yun yung comment ng reviewer for the paper. And of course, for data analysis, um, the reviewer will look for the research design. Okay, and of course, statistical treatment. So as I mentioned, um, you need to properly explain and justify why that is the right or appropriate um, research design. Same is true with statistical treatment. Do not simply mention, uh, my study is descriptive. Explain why it is descriptive. For example, if your, your, your statistical test is, let's say, um, logistic regression, you need to explain why logistic regression is the appropriate statistical test. Okay? So, kailangan laging may, meron ka la, laging support, meron ka laging explanation. Okay? In order for the reviewer to have a clear idea na tama ang ginagawa mo. Okay? So, these are the three things na hinahanap ng reviewer. Okay? When it comes to methods. Okay? Sa results naman, anong hinahanap? Of course, the results um, presents the key findings or key results of the study including statistical analysis. Usually, um, dito natin pinipreset lahat ng mga statistical tests okay, na pinerform natin. So usually, the flow is from or, 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 or should be based rather on the hypothesis or hypothesis and or statement of the problem. Okay? So ganun usually ang, ang, ang format ng results. Um, what are the typical problems na na-encounter ko sa, ano, sa results? One, um, um, I think with with the number of um, papers that I reviewed from this top journal, ang usual na nandetect ko na something um, questionable yung data or yung results itself. Um, there uh, there were couple of papers that I noticed mali ang kanilang results. Okay, for example, they say na ito yung value ng composite reliability and Cronbach's alpha. Then um, ang tendency Okay, um, mali yung kanyang pagka either na encode niya ng mali dun sa table um, or um, sometimes hindi pumalo yung isang item sa threshold that hindi niya nakita. Okay, so what is what is my point here? Um, if you will be presenting your result, it is a must for us to properly check all our tables. Okay? Um, there are good reviewers sa ganitong aspeto. Okay? Um, there are really good reviewers. Uh, particularly kung quantitative ang study. Okay? So, we really need to properly check everything bago natin isubmit yung paper natin. Okay? So, typically for the results, we have tables and figures um, and they are accompanied by interpretation. Okay? And in inbred format, typically the results okay, is a separate section. Discussion is also another separate section. Okay? So in the results, typically, as I mentioned, meron tayong table. So let's assume ito yung table natin. Okay? From the table, kailangan meron tayong interpretation. Anong ibig sabihin ng table na yon? Okay? In the interpretation, typically, anong inahanap ng reviewer? Ang inahanap niya is, alam mo ang ibig sabihin ng mga numero na yan. Okay? Anong ibig sabihin ng mga numero na yan? Okay? So very important um, yung pagkakaroon ng tamang interpretation. Okay? Ng ating results. Okay? So, yun ang inahanap ng ating reviewer. Now, in the discussion section, ano naman ang nilalagay sa discussion? Okay? Um, the discussion section, of course, um, our purpose is to interpret and describe the important results in light with what was already known about the research problem being investigated. Okay? So, here, 
we we try to provide new insights about the problem okay um in our discussion se se um, section also we try to properly explain and discuss kaya tinanong siyang discussion anong ibig sabihin ng finding or result mo okay so that is the discussion section now in the discussion section i will give you a tip kung paano mo malalaman kung okay yung discussion mo um in the discussion section tatlo ang kailangan mo sagutin okay one what is your finding Number two, you need to answer what does the finding suggest? And number three, what do prior studies tell about your finding? Okay? So kapag nasa discussion section tayo ng ating paper, these are the three things that we need to look uh, We need to look into. Okay? Um, for example, if you have five hypotheses, okay, and we will do hypothesis testing. So typically in the discussion, usually kailangan meron kang limang paragraphs. Okay? Each hypothesis should be properly discussed. So for example, let's say, sabi ng hypothesis 1, uh, um, supported um, because it is significant. Ang effect size niya, large effect size. Sabi niya, A is significantly related to B. Okay? So kailan mo sabihin ngayon do sa first statement mo yung finding mo o yung result mo. Then the succeeding statement should be a discussion of what does the finding suggest. Anong ibig sabihin ng resulta? Okay? Um, and last, you need to identify now what do prior studies tell about your finding. Nagko-contradict ba yan based sa prior studies? Or for example, let's say kapareho yung, yung, yung finding mo ng mga prior studies. Okay? So you need to establish. Okay? Or you need to include okay, literature review again. So if you will be looking at it, ang literature review ang function niya dun sa introduction part ng IMRAD and at the same time sa discussion section ng paper natin. Okay? Because in our discussion section, we try to uh, explain okay, um, yung ano naging resulta natin and also anong sinasabi ng prior studies sa results natin. Okay? Then for, okay, for the conclusion naman, after your discussion, kasi ang discussion natin kasama yung conclusion, typically anong inahanap ng reviewer? One, they will be looking for the implications of the study. What does the study imply? Number two, practical contribution, theoretical contribution, limitations of the study, and future research directions. So typically, ito yung inahanap ng mga reviewers. Ano ba yung implications ng study mo? Ano yung practical contribution niya? What is the theoretical contribution? What is or are the limitations of your study? And what else can be done with that kind of topic? Okay? So these five things should be present okay, in the conclusion aspect of your paper. So if you will be looking it now, um, kapag the review ng reviewer ang ating paper, they are really scrutinizing every aspect of our paper. Okay? Um, sometimes sa conclusion kasi, ang, ang, usually ang nilalagay natin dito recommendation. Okay? Kasi usually, sa format kasi natin sa thesis, ang title ng chapter 5 is... Uh, um, conclusions and recommendations. When we talk about recommendations, basically this is practical contribution. Dito mo ilagay yan, practical contributions. Okay? Uh, but do not forget, okay, in research publication, you need to also have theoretical contribution. Okay? Ano yung naging contribution mo sa theory or sa, sa theories na ginamit mo? Okay? Um, these are very important. So typically, ito yung usual na inahanap ng reviewer. Okay, so for example, you mentioned practical, but you fail to identify theoretical. The reviewer will will require you to identify the theoretical contribution of your study. Okay, so these are the five things na inahanap ng reviewers in the conclusion section. Okay, so let me stop mo na dito before I'll discuss further yung mga nitty gritty ng research publication. So, and I think, uh, Doc Lakap, let us just first have a 10 minute break before we will, in, well, we will be entertaining some of our, panic, our participants' questions. So, it's already 10 or 5. So, let's just have a quick uh, 10 minute break. So, we can come back at around 10 15. Po. And then, Doc Lakap will entertain your queries. Thank you.
Okay, welcome back again, dear participants. Um, before we have a quick break, I think uh, Dr. Kalimutan ko yung name niya. Is raising her hand. Uh, sandali po. Nakalimutan ko, sorry, yung name niya. Si Dr. Um, Lian po ata. Dr. Uh, Lian Gonyo Cruz. Yeah, I think. Sir Aki. Or si Ma'am Dr. Rante po ata. Someone is raising her hand kanina. I'm sorry, hindi ko na-jot down yung name niya. Okay. Yung nakita ko si Miss Julian. Okay. Uh, uh, Ma'am Julie, would you like to raise uh, some questions or concern to our speaker? Ah, napindot lang daw pala. Napindot lang naman daw, Doc, Doc Lakaw. Sige po, I think we can continue. Okay, so thank you very much, Prof. So if there are no questions yet, I'll continue my presentation. Um, then maybe later, kapag meron na kayong mga tanong, you can ask me um, questions. Okay, so the next part is uh, that I will be presenting is how to spot um, reputable and predatory journals, okay, and conferences. But my focus more uh, on this topic is more on, on, on the characteristics of predatory journals, okay? Um, today, it is also very relevant to all of us to properly identify whether a particular journal is predatory or not. Okay, um, most of the predatory journals or predatory publishers um, are basically attacking young researchers, mga young scientists. Um, they, they basically, they, um, their targets are novice researchers, um, those researchers that really want to have research publication. Um, I think it is very important uh, to all of us as as part of the academy kung saan natin pinapublish yung papers natin because it has it has something to do with the impact of our publications sa ating reputation as a as an academic okay so just to give you an idea muna on the business model na ginagamit ng mga publishers um as i mentioned meron tayong tinatag nating scopus and web of science index journals Typically, for Scopus and Web of Science Index journals, we have what we call open access journals. Okay, when we say open access, it means it is a, a type of business model wherein once your paper um, was published, um, your paper will be available for everyone. Okay, so makikita yung buong content. So tawag natin dyan open access. But we have a special type of open access na tinatag natin open access without APC. What is APC? APC is article processing charge. Okay, ito yung binabayad natin. So for open access without APC, usually, okay, ang ibig sabihin yan, um, the paper is open access. Ibig sabihin kapag na-publish yan, it will be available to everyone. And yung author, walang binabayad yan. Okay? So walang binabayad yan without APC. So for example, um, ng mga to, of course, we have a lot of journals na open access and without APC. Like for example, Asia Pacific Social Science Review. So every time I publish my papers with them, um, walang bayad. And of course, um, since without APC siya, kapag na-publish ang, ang paper ko, open access, it means everyone can download it for free, yung buong contents. Okay, so tawag natin dyan, open access without APC. Then we also have open access with APC. Okay? So what is open access with APC? It means these are journals that um, if you will be publishing your paper with them, you will be paying certain amounts. So tawag natin doon APC again. Then once you paid, ang mangyayari, your, your paper, of course, the payment usually happens after the review. So kapag na-accept na yung paper mo for publication, that would be the time that will that, that they will give, uh, that you will be paying to them. Okay? And once you paid to them, your paper will be open access. Ibig sabihin, their paper will be available online and everyone can download the whole paper. Okay? So, uh, pwedeng makita yan ng other authors. Okay? And of course, meron tayo, uh, example na mga yan, Sage Open, M uh, MDPI Journals. And of course, meron din naman tayo tinatag natin close access. Okay? Kapag sinabi natin close access, um, ibig sabihin, your paper will be accepted. Let's say your paper was accepted for publication. Okay? Hindi ka magbabayad. Okay, as an author, 
hindi ka magbabayad as an author, pero kapag pinablish yung paper mo, ang makikita lang ng reader is yung title, author, abstract. Okay? At kapag gustong basahin ng mga reader, yung paper mo, the reader should pay. Okay, kaya di, di ba if you will be looking for some journals, ganito yung setup nila. Yung yung reader, yung kail, kailangan mo na nila magbayad para ma-access nila yung buong paper. So tawag natin doon close access without APC. Ibig sabihin, yung charge, instead na ibigay sa author, pinapasa yan sa reader sa nagbabasa. So kung ako yung author, sinabit ko yung paper, na-accept yung paper, at yung model nila is close access without APC. So ang tendency, hindi ako magbabayad sa kanila, ipapublish nila ang paper ko. Then the reader, if they want to read my paper, they need to pay to the journal. Okay? So tawag natin doon close access. Okay? So example ng mga yan, yung mga Emerald Journal, Sage, Elsevier, Taylor, and Francis. Typically, for for some journals, they, they, they follow... Um, dual type. So for example, may mga journal na closed access siya and at the same time open access siya. Okay? Um, so depende kung anong journal uh, yung mga yun. So you just need to be, uh, you, sh you, should, you should know all these things simply because it has something to do with payments. Okay? So kung for example, magpapublish ka and you want reputable journal, then you can go and you don't have, for example, okay, you don't have For example, the capacity to pay. Like for example, in our school, um, we do not shoulder publication fee. Okay, so tendency, um, ang mga pang mga ang mga faculty members namin, they go for publication for open access without TPC. Kasi marami din sila, sobrang dami. Like for example, Asia Pacific Social Science Review, De La Salle Business and Economics Review. There are also journals in our neighboring countries like in Malaysia na publish ng mga different university that they are open access and they are indexed in Scopus and you do not need to pay. Okay? So these are the different models. But of course, if your school meron siyang capacity to pay so they can go for open access, then just pay the APC. But I would suggest kung magbabayad kayo ng APC for open access, you go for reputable publishers. Okay, because this is now um, one of the business models na very exploited ng mga predatory journals. There are a lot of Scopus Index journals today that they are open access. They accept a lot of papers with minimal review and they will asking you for payments. Okay, so maraming mga journals ngayon yan. Kaya if you still remember a while ago, I mentioned Scopus and Web of Science are basically um, decluttering their list. Ibig sabihin, kapag napatunayan nila or nakita nila na ang dami mong pinapublish tapos pinagbabayad mo yung mga, um, ang mga authors and at the same time, walang masyadong review na nagawa or naganap, okay, laging accept ng accept lang ng papers, then that is a signal that that journal or publisher is a predatory journal. And kapag nakita yan ng, ng, ng um, Web of Science or Scopus, aalisin ka na nila sa list nila. So, hindi ka na Scopus Index. Kaya lagi ko sinasabi, you always need to check yung list ng Scopus and Web of Science because every now and then, nagde-declutter sila, nagde-delist sila ng mga journals and publishers. Okay? So, you need to be careful on that. Okay? So, of course, meron din naman tayong mga non-Scopus um, and Web of Science Index Journal, yung hindi pa na-index ng Scopus and Web of Science. Of course, meron tayong open access without APC. Okay, like for example, yung Journal of Entrepreneurship and Business. Um, with um, This is uh, one of the top journals in Malaysia in entrepreneurship, which is currently indexed in ASEAN. So, the, um, it is indexed in ASEAN Citation Index. Meron din ako nakita, for example, Mindanao Journal of Science and Technology. Um, based in the Philippines, managed by one university in Mindanao. Um, Asian Index also, Journal of Educational and Human Resource Development, Asian Index also. So these are examples of open access without APC. Okay, and of course, meron din tayo open access with APC, yung other type of non-scopus and web of science index journals. Okay? So if you will be asking me if, for example, Um, sir, nagpapublish po ba kayo sa mga papers or pwede po ba or nagpapublish ba kayo sa papers tapos nagbabayad kayo? Um, ako, hindi ako nagbabayad. I always choose four um, journals na ganito, yung model, open access without ATC. Kaya kung mapapansin nyo, um, most of my publication, kapag local, makikita sa Asia Pacific Social Science Review. Kung close access naman yan, or kung, kung ano naman yan sa mga top 
journals yung mga reputable talaga close access ang hinahanap ko at without APC because I do not have the capacity to pay. Um, I do not want um, um, na magbayad ako for publishing my paper. What's the reason? Because I work hard for my research. And what's the use of paying if, for example, uh, ipapublish lang nila yung paper ko? Kailangan ang premium is nasa akin pa rin. Okay, what do I mean with that one? If I will be publishing my paper, I want my paper to be published, okay, under wet peer review, and at the same time, I will not pay anything. Why? Because I work hard with my research. Okay? So that is uh, basically my philosophy. Okay? And there are a lot of journals na under yan ng ito, itong green and itong blue. Okay? Sobrang dami nila. Okay? Um, usually, I avoid this one, itong mga open access uh, with APC kasi as I mentioned, minsan ang mamahal. Like for example, there are journals that will charge you 1,000 US dollars for one publication. Okay? So imagine how much is that in peso. There are journals that will require you to pay 500 US dollars for one publication. Okay? And if you will be looking at it, is it worthy to pay 500 US dollars just for our paper to be published? As I mentioned, kung ang university natin meron siyang capacity to pay, I'm okay with that one. Okay? But always look for open access with APC that are reputable. Such as, for example, go for Elsevier, go for Sage, go for Taylor and Francis, go for um, Wiley. Okay? Go for Emerald. Okay? Kasi yan mga rep reputable publishers. Okay? So those are the major considerations. Okay? So what is predatory journal? Of course, every now and then, naririnig natin tong predatory. Predatory was coined by Jeffrey Bill. Um, if you still remember, Jeffrey Bill created the Bill's List. Um, Bill's List is a list of predatory journals according to the parameters set by Jeffrey Bill. Um, according to Jeffrey Bill, the number of predatory publishers has risen from 18 in 2011. 18 lang sila dati yung mga predatory publishers in 2011. And in 2015, they are already 700 and what more today kung gano sila karami okay um, as I mentioned the usual target young researchers mga young scientists mga novice researchers okay yung nangangailangan talaga ng publication okay so um, this was the era na pinakuso quote and quote yung term na predatory and it was because of Jeffrey Beale um, in one paper Okay, actually it is a commentary paper written by several authors, ito sila. Okay? So the title of the commentary paper is Predatory Journals No Definition No Defense. Okay? So what these authors um, did was they identified or they they um, they met and at the same time um, they agreed on the definition of what predatory publishing is all about. Okay? And based on this uh, paper this is their definition, okay? Predatory journals and publishers are entities that prioritize self-interest at the expense of scholarship and are characterized by false or misleading information, deviation from the best editorial and publication practices, a lack of tra transparency, and or the use of aggressive and indiscriminate solicitation practices. So this is their definition of predatory journals and publishers. Um, if you will be looking at the definition, pinaka glaring sa akin yung self-interest. And that self-interest is the money that we pay to them. Okay? Um, if you will be looking at it, predatory journals are really after our money. Okay? They do not care about quality. Kaya kung mapapansin mo, one of the indication that the journal is predatory, tignan mo yung number of issues at published papers na meron sila. I notice um, there, there are predatory journals sa isang issue nakakapag-publish lang napakarami and kapag babasahin mo yung content mafe-feel mo talaga na it, they are not worthy to be published kasi ang dami nilang errors but how come they, they were published because um, if they will be accept uh, if they will accept this paper for publication they will get money okay so parang ano talaga self-interest is profit okay and typically for predatory journals um, they, they have false or misleading information they deviate from best practices like peer reviewing. Sasabihin nila na peer review ang paper, but in reality, uh, hindi. Okay? Um, they have lack of, uh, they, they exhibit lack of transparency and they are very aggressive. Ito yung laging nag-e-email sa atin every now and then na mag-publish tayo sa kanila. 
Okay? So, tawag natin doon predatory journals. Um, journals, if you, the journal is reputable, they will never email us because we will be looking after them. Okay? Kasi best journals sila, yeah, reputable journals sila. Okay? So, th- that is the definition of predatory journal. Predatory journals are a global threat. They accept articles for publication along with author's fee without performing promise quality check for issues such as plagiarism and ethical approval. Okay? Um, there were several authors, um, ang ginawa nila, they tested uh, itong capacity ng mga predatory journals na to. There is one um, author na um, a colleague of mine, ang ginawa niya, he created uh, a fake article. So ang ginawa niya, nag-copy-paste siya ng different paragraphs ng different articles, ginawa niya isang article at sinabi niya sa predatory journal. And voila, it was accepted by this predatory journal. What does it mean? Hindi sila nag-review. They did not read. They did not even check for plagiarism. Okay? So this is the characteristic of a predatory journal. So you need to be careful. Because sometimes, maganda yung experience na makakareceive ka ng email that your paper was accepted. Am I right? It adds parang ano yun? Um, um, care, uh, parang it is um, a form of happiness on our part or satisfaction on our part if we receive an email that our paper was accepted. But you need to be careful. Predatory ba ang nagbigay? Kapag predatory, ibig sabihin, even others are also receiving the same results. Okay? So you really need to be careful on that. Um, another article that I came across a few years back, um, this one, um, in I. Kailan ba to? 2017. Potential predatory and legitimate biomedical journals. Can you tell the difference across sectional comparison? So they did the research on predatory journals in biomedical field. Ang uh, nakita nilang characteristic, common characteristic, they promise rapid publication. Okay? As I mentioned, if you will be looking the stringent process of peer review ng mga top journals, hindi mabilis ang publication sa mga top journals. Why? Because they want to check quality. If a journal will promise you for a rapid publication in, a, in an exchange for a fee, then you need to think twice. That might be a predatory. That is basically a red flag. Okay? Why do authors publish in predatory journals? So there was also an article in 2017 written by Kurt. And ito yung nakita niya. Many researchers publish in predatory journals because they provide the services that are desired. And what are those services? Rapid publication. Many journals listed as predatory are not based in the countries declared on their website. What does it mean? Sasabihin nila yung journal is located in the in, in the United States. Pero kung makikita mo yung membership ng editor from India, for example. Okay? So kapag ganun siya, you need to think twice. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, they are just alluring you as, as, as a researcher. Kasi ang ating mentality, particularly for Asian, kapag American, it is always good. Okay? So, anong ginagawa ng mga predatory journals? They will tell you that the journal is situated in a Western country. Then, if you will be looking the, the, the member of the editor, they are not from Western countries. Okay? Uh, many researchers from developing world, like the Philippines, feel that Western journals would reject them So, and so look for alternative journals. Okay? We always fear rejection. That's the reasons, that is one of the reasons why we, we, we end up with the predatory journal. Because a predatory journal, uh, mataas ang chance, or actually um, almost 100% ang chance na ma-accept ang paper natin. Many scholars feel insufficiently trained in research methodology and reporting, so so cannot submit to high-profile journals. We always feel inferior. Uh, based on my experience, I always uh, try to motivate uh, fellow researchers, fellow Filipino researchers, by telling them that try, try to submit, have the feel of submitting papers to these top tier journals, so that you have the idea of what are they looking for for a particular research article. Kasi usually they give you feedback. Ano yung comment nila? Bakit hindi na-accept? From those feedback, try to grow. Um, try to um, um, treat their, their comment as constructive criticisms. Okay? So that you will grow as a researcher. Um, even I, during my initial stage in my research publication, I have a lot of rejection. And uh, those are my motivation now. Why? Um, I think it is much easier for me to publish papers. Okay, but of course, even until now, I still um, um, I still receive rejection, and that's okay, because I, I always tell myself rejection is part of my career in the academia. 
Okay? Hindi lahat ng sinasubmit ko ma-accept yan. Okay? So, um, that is that is a, a normal process. Um, next, um, there is a need for awareness raising about the importance of journal selection among early career researchers in developing countries because they notice most of the targets, mga career, early career researchers in developing countries like the Philippines. Okay? Um, Eton in 2018 came up with a resource guide on how we can avoid predatory journals or questionable or conf uh, conferences. Um, ito yung hinighlight niya. Okay, just to give you yung, um, um, some um, common characteristics. Ito yun. Number one, are not linked to or run by credible scholarly, academic, or technical society or association, though some pretend to be. Okay? So pretentious or sometimes hindi nila pinapakita sining organizer yung mga pangalan okay they simply say um, this is a conference organized by Asian blah 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 okay number two they send spam emails um ito pa they promise fast publication ito pa usually predatory journals okay they use the word international world global, universal in the title of their conference or in their journal. Because kapag narinig natin yung word na international, okay, na, na, na ano tayo, na attract tayo, kala natin, ano, um, okay, kasi international. But basically, these are their marketing strategies to attract early career researchers. So you need to be careful, okay, sa pag-publish ng mga, sa mga predatory journals. Okay? So, meron din siyang checklist here. So, I will not be discussing this one, but this checklist will give you an idea whether a journal is predatory or not. Okay? If you will be asking me, are all Scopus Index Journal considered legitimate or non-predatory journals? My answer, no. As I mentioned, hindi lahat ng, ng Scopus Index and Web of Science Index Journal are legit. There are some journals na currently indexed in Scopus and Web of Science, okay, but they are predatory. Okay? Uh, magbigay ako ng example. Okay? Um, this one was my example, I think, last year in one conference also. So I give this one as an example. Um, I came across with this one because I received a lot of um, queries from fellow um, researchers whether this one is legitimate or not. Okay? Um, this is the journal, International Journal of Engineering and Advanced Technology. I do not know if you already came across um, um, with this journal. Okay? Kung babasahin mo from the title itself, International Journal of Engineering and Advanced Technology, um, ang topic na ina-accept niya is engineering and advanced technology. Okay? And if you will be looking dun sa aim of the journal, ito yung aim niya. Okay, and ang ina has something to do on, sabi niya, computer science, engineering, IT, electrical engineering, electronics, and so on and so forth. In short, anything related to engineering and advanced technology. Is that good? My answer is yes. Okay, why? Kasi very specific ang inahanap nila na topic for their journal. Okay, so what I did is I tried to review and examine their website. In their website, they claim that they are indexed. Okay, so sabi niya dito, they, um, they are currently indexed um, in Scopus. Okay, ito siya. So sabi nila, index daw siya sa Scopus. Okay, of course, if you are early career researcher, ma-attract ka. Oh, Scopus ito. So possibly ito ang next target journal ko. So I tried to review again their, 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 their journal. Okay, um, and in their website, I noticed that they, they ask for payment. They have article processing charge. Okay, so for foreigners now, it is 200 US dollars. And these are their payment. This is their way of payment. Okay, so um, at the back of my mind, okay, sige, meron silang article processing charge. That is okay as long as the journal is legit. Okay, pero I try to examine again other parts of their website. And I noticed, so tinignan ko yung mga published papers nila. In 2011, ito yung start na kanilang publication. They have only two issues. Ibig sabihin, sa isang taon, dalawang beses lang sila nag-publish. In 2012, dumami sila from 2, naging 6. 2013, naging 6. 14, 6. 15, 6. So if you're going to look at it, naging regular na tig si 6. Yung, yung issues nila. 27 is 6. 2018, naging 9. 2019, nag-jump into 21 issues. 
Okay? And nung chinek ko to kasi last year ko to ginawa itong pag ano to pag review ng journal na to. As of May 12, 2022, meron silang four issues. So I was concerned with this one, itong jump from 9 to 21. So inisip ko 29 issues in a year for 2019. And I noticed this was also the year na naaccept Okay, ang journal na to sa Scopus. Okay, so ang tendency since na-accept sila into Scopus publication, ang tendency nag-accept na sila nag-accept ng paper. Okay, kasi nga na-attract nila. Okay, pwede nilang i-market. We are Scopus indexed journal and you can now submit your paper to us. Okay, so what I did is I read okay, yung mga published papers nila. Tiningnan ko yung quality based on, on, on the content of the paper. Okay. And I check also pala, um, very specific. Look at this one, sa kanilang volume 9, issue 2, December 2019, ang pinablish nilang paper is 976 papers. In only one issue, ha? one issue alone. So imagine ninyo, 976 ang napublish sa isang issue. At iniisip ko, kung double blind review na yon, so they need more than 1,000 reviewers to review the papers. At saan sila kukuha ng more than 1,000 reviewers to review a paper for a single issue? That is very hard. Okay? So ibig sabihin, this is already a red flag na nag accept sila ng paper without proper review. Okay? Kasi nga, scopus index na sila. Then, um, in their issue, in their volume 9, okay, in their volume 9, issue 3, February 2020, 2020 um, pa article published 746. So, same din ang aking ano, um, question, bakit 700? Gano'n sila kadaming nagre-review? For um, volume 9, issue 4, April 2020 to 458. Okay. So ito, mga red flag na to sobrang dami nilang pinapublish. Then, ang ginawa ko, randomly, I check yung mga published papers. One, I noticed there is a published paper on organizational commitment. And I ask myself, anong relation ng organizational commitment sa topic ng engineering and advanced technology? Okay? So hindi related itong topic na to dito. Bakit ito na-publish sa isang journal na hindi related sa engineering and advanced technology? Red flag again. Tiningnan ko yung other published papers. And one of the published papers, sabi niya, towards English as an international language. So this topic is on language. Pero bakit siya na-publish sa isang engineering and technology? Okay, journal. That is quite far in terms of content. Okay, another vocabulary, vocabulary learning strategies na na-publish din, same journal, which is quite far from the Uh, purpose or aim of the of the of the journal which is engineering and technology okay so this is a red flag now what i did is pumunta ako sa scopus tininan ko yung ano scopus discontinued source list kasi ito yung list na nag nag nag, nag nagsasabi kung natanggal na yung journal to scopus list during that time i checked okay yung discontinued source list ng scopus and i noticed kasama siya sa Excel file, sabi niya ito. And yung reason, kung titignan mo siya, okay, ang reason niya is publication concern. Ibig sabihin, predatory ang journal. Okay, kaya tinanggal na siya ni Scopus sa kanyang list. Okay? So you will notice here, this is a practice of predatory. Okay, predatory journals and publishers. They only get money from us. So you need to be careful sa pagpapublish ng ating research papers. Okay? Now, when in doubt, okay, always check a check it through Google. Okay? Meron naman mga simple ways. Just type, for example, usually kapag tinipe mo yung pangalan ng journal, kung talagang prominent na predatory yan, lumilitaw yan sa, sa Google at sinasabi niyang predatory. Okay? Uh, number two, Um, kung titingin mo siya, usually ang ginagawa ko kapag sa Google, tinatype ko yung pangalan ng journal tapos ina-add ko yung word na predatory. Tapos um, kapag lumitaw siya sa Google, sa Google okay, ibig sabihin red flag na. Talagang posibleng predatory talaga siya. So that is a signal na huwag kang mag-submit. Okay? Another, you can look for, journal, uh, for, for um, sources such as this one. 
This is from University Science Malaysia. Uh, meron silang website, yung, I think this is their library, if I'm not mistaken. Their library has a list of predatory and blacklisted journal publishers. Okay, so maybe you can, if you want to check um, University Science Malaysia, meron silang list, okay, ng mga predatory journals and publishers. You can also go to this list, okay, by Ministry of Higher Education in Malaysia. Okay, I just do not know kung na-update na na ito kasi itong nakuha ko is 2013 pa. But what is good with Malaysian higher education, um, they are basically fighting also predatory journals ngayon. Um, they are coming up with lists para ma, 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 ano, ma, ma, um, mag, mabigyan ng information yung mga Malaysian researchers. Um, you can also go to this one, to this site, okay, para makita nyo yung mga list din ni Bills, okay, ni Bill um, sa kanyang, ano, sa yung mga na, nauna mga list niya for predatory journal. You can also go to this one to check out open access journal quality indicators. You can go to this uh, site. Or kung gusto nyo makita yung mga retraction, um, when I say retraction, ito yung na-publish na paper tapos binawi ng author or ng publisher kasi there's something wrong. Okay? Doon sa content. So you can go to retractionwatch.com to see kung ano yung mga recently na na-retract na, na journal. Okay? Or you can go to this one, predatoryjournals.com slash publisher for the list of predatory journals. Okay? Um, you can simply go to Google, just type this of predatory journals, bibigyan ka na ng results. Okay? Um, of course, as I mentioned, every now and then, may yung mga predatory journals. Every now and then, nagsusulputan sila. And sometimes, of course, in, sa bilis ng pagsulpot ng predatory journals, minsan, nahihirapan din itong mga list of predatory journals na i-update yung kanilang list. Kasi almost every day, may lumilitaw ng bagong predatory journal. Okay? So you need to you need to be careful with your research publication. And the last part that I will be discussing is the guidelines in research publication in Scopus and Web of Science Index Journal. Okay? So just I'm just going to give you some guidelines. Okay? If you will be publishing a research paper, things that you need to consider, okay? Um, I read an article from El Omar, which is published in Elsevier, and sabi niya, ito daw yung reason bakit marireject instantly yung, isang, yung paper. Ito daw. Okay, so based on his paper, these are the possible reason bakit instant reject ang paper natin. Number one, lack of novelty. Okay, as I mentioned, dun sa previous slide ko, novelty will play um, a huge ano, factor whether uh, a reputable journal will accept your paper or not. It is descriptive work rather than mechanistic. Kapag purely descriptive lang, okay? Um, usually, ang mga top journals, they are looking for a better analysis, much in-depth yung analysis. Um, um, if, for example, your questions are uninteresting, and of course, if you have poor or inappropriate study design or research design. Again, it has something to do with appropriateness of research methodology. So if you will be looking at um, the points given by El Omar, it is almost similar with what I've mentioned a while ago. Okay? Then, according naman kay Duffy 1995, these are the reasons bakit sila nagre-reject ng paper for the two journal A A AMJ and A ASQ. Okay, so sabi niya kapag walang theory, nire-reject nila. Kapag ang um, concept and operationalization not in alignments, insufficient definition in theory and in design, macro structure yung flow, uh, mature yung style and tone ng writing, inadequate research design, not relevant in the field, over-engineering, um, conclusions not in alignment, and you are um, cutting up your data. Okay, so these are the possible reasons bakit daw nagre-reject sila ng paper. Okay? So if you will be publishing your paper, the first thing that you need to identify your target journal. Saan ko ba muna gusto siyang i-publish? So typically, in my personal experience ang ginagawa ko, I already have a list kung saan ko sila sinasubmit based sa topic na meron ako. Then, the next thing that I will be doing, I will be checking yung tinatag nating email scope so that I have the idea whether the topic that I want to publish is similar okay, with the journal. So, tinitingnan ko what is their aims, what is the scope, what are the kind of paper that they accept. So, that's that's one of the things that I always consider para kapag sinamit ko, less yung possibility na ma-reject because of the um, topic or the scope of my paper. 
Number two, I also check the author guidelines. So I check ano yung format nila, ano yung template nila, ano yung referencing style na pina-follow so that I can adjust my paper based on the requirements of the journal. Okay? Um, um, another is um, typically um, for, for research publication, they are looking for a robust research framework such as this one. Okay? Um, gone are the days na dapat pina-follow natin yung IPO model. Okay, yung input process output. I discussed this one, I think, last ano, day one. Um, hindi na ina, hindi accept yan sa research publication. Okay, particularly sa mga top journals sa business. Okay, so typically what they want is a research framework where your hypothesis will be manifesting. So kailangan kapag tinignan nila yung framework mo, nagmamanifest yung mga hypothesis mo. Okay, such as this. Okay. Um, this is a checklist from Asia Pacific Social Science Review. So, tignan natin ano yung hinahanap nila sa pagre-review. So, kapag nag-review kami ng paper sa Asia Pacific Social Science Review, ito yung hinahanap namin. Actually, this is the review form that I received nung sinabmit ko yung paper ko sa kanila. This one. The mediating effect of employee engagement on the relationship of transformational leadership and intention topics. So, this is the, the result that I received from them. So they, they, they measure or they evaluate the paper based on one, originality, number two, relevance of topic, number three, clarity of objectives, number four, quality of data, number five, value of your analysis and interpretation, next, validity of the conclusion, quality of the abstract and the grammar. Then, pero silang recommendation, yung editor, accept for publication, accept with minor, accept with major revision, and reject for publication. And good thing this paper was accept for publication without any revision. But it really took time for me to receive the, the report. Kasi as I mentioned, tedious ang process nila. Okay? For, 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 for Asia Pacific Social Science Review. Okay? So this is another paper. Ito yung mga sample papers na na-publish ko sa mga top journals. So what this one is from um, um, Journal of Science and Technology Policy Management uh, of Emerald. This one again in 2022, nakapag-submit ako ng paper and successfully um, um, it was published at Asia Pacific Social Science Review. Okay, ito yun. Um, it has something to do with tourism marketing about this uh, Angeles City Cisip Fiesta. Then this one is for advances in hospitality and tourism research by Aquinas University. Ito, I think it took me one year before it was published kasi sobrang higpit nila sa review. Uh, but it was a, uh, actually it was a good experience kasi nakita kung paan sila mag-review. So um, this is also one of the top journals in hospitality and tourism. So I was able to publish a paper to them. Ito yung title. Then this one, in 20, uh, again, ito yung Actually, I think this is my first paper for Asia Pacific Social Science Review, and it was in 2019. Then in 2020, nakapag-publish ulit ako sa kanila about marketing naman, together with my co-author, Dr. Tungkab. Then in 20, I think this one, I think this is only this year, early this year, um, Cassett's Journal of Social Sciences. This the, this is the paper na na-publish after two years. So sobrang tagal niya. So kung titignan mo yung article history, 2018, tapos naging available lang siya online ng December. Okay, tapos nakita, sinabmit sa akin ng, I think, January 2021, yung copy ko. Okay? So if you will be looking at it, okay, in research publication, there are two names now. We have Scopus and Clarivate Analytics, Web of Science. Okay? And if you want to publish your papers uh, sa, uh, sa mga ASEAN universities or ASEAN organizations, um, you can visit itong mga link na ibibigay ko. So for example, in the Philippines, nung sinerge ko ito, meron tayong 25 journals that are currently indexed in Scopus. Okay? So itong mga journals na ito, based sa Philippines. Okay? Then we also have this one is for Malaysia. For Malaysia, they have 95 journals that are currently indexed in Scopus. Okay? Then this one is for Indonesia, 38. For Thailand, they have 40, for zero. For Singapore, they have 133. Okay? 
So yun. So yun yung nasa ASEAN na currently um, merong um, journals na indexes focus. And of course, if you are looking for um, reputable journals, um, top journals, you can go to Elsevier. Ang dami lang journal. Um, Emerald Publishing, Taylor and Francis. Okay, this is sa so Taylor and Francis. I think yung paper ko, it took almost a year bago nila i-accept. Okay? So matagal yung kanilang ano, um, review process. So we have Taylor and Francis, Sage, we have Wiley, Springer, of course. Okay, so yun yung mga tinatag natin mga reputable journals. And most of this one, nag a sila ng open access with APC and close access without APC. Okay, so meron tayong lagging options. Okay, so uh, this one, if you want, for example, if you are clueless, anong journal, mo gusto, uh, kung saan mo siya isasubmit. I would suggest you go to this um, um, site. This is for um, Elsevier. Meron silang tinatag nating journal finder. Okay, so they have journal finder. You simply um, copy-paste the title of your paper and your abstract and your keywords. Tapos imamatch niya kung saan mo pwedeng submit yung paper mo. So tawag natin dyan journal finder. This is for Elsevier. Meron din ang Web of Science, tawag niya Manuscript Matcher, para ma-match mo yung paper mo kung saan mo posibleng isubmit. Okay? So tinutulungan ka na nila kung saan yung mga potential journals kung saan mo sila pwedeng isubmit. Okay? Same also with this one is tawag ni naman nila from Taylor and Francis Journal Suggester. Okay? So same process lang din. So it matches yung possible journals kung saan mo siya pwedeng submit sa Taylor and Francis. Springer also, they have Springer Suggester. So same lang. Then for Wiley, they have also ano, um, Journal Finder also for, for Wiley. Okay? So if you're going to look at it, yun yung mga different ways natin on how we can properly select yung mga journals kung saan natin sila ipapublish. Um, of course, at the end of the day, as researcher, as part of higher education, um, ang kailangan natin is to publish our paper and typically our aim is to publish our paper in journals that are indexed in Scopus and Web of Science. But do not forget yung tinatawag nating um, integrity ng journal and yung reputation ng journal. Okay? Um, I always tell this one that research is a habit. Um, it is not an overnight thing. So, um, hindi ibig sabihin nag-attend kayo ng three-day webinar like this one. Tomorrow, magaling na kayo na researcher. Hindi siya ganun. It really take time. But once you imbibe um, the process of research, once you love research, once you make research as part of your routine in the academy, then it is much easier for you to write and publish research paper. Okay? Um, before I end my presentation, always remember to always remain, uh, always have an open mind to learn new things because if you don't learn, you don't grow. Okay? And of course, Alvin Toffler, by instructing students how to learn and learn and relearn, a powerful new dimensions can be added to education. Ito yung pinaka yung gusto ko lagi. Lagi ko sinasabi, we need to learn, kaya tayo nag-aaral. But there are times that we need to unlearn kasi hindi, sila, hindi na sila uh, appropriate, passe na. And at the same time, we need to relearn sometimes. Okay? So that um, this um, the new knowledge na meron tayo, nakukuha pa rin natin siya. As I always say, we need to have an open mind with the new and emerging perspectives and concepts in research. Uh, marami ng pagbabago ang research. Um, marami na rin mga techniques that we really need to know. Um, and one of the ways for us to know kung ano yung mga changes na to, read top journals. Makikita mo kung anong klaseng publication meron na sila. And try to compare yung type ng publication na meron ka. So kailangan nakakasabay tayo kay Papano with them. And how do we do that? By attending webinars such as this, um, we tend to learn and experience itong mga new concepts in research and research publication. Okay, so again, thank you very much for the, uh, for the opportunity to share my humble knowledge in research. I hope you learned something from my three-day presentation and I wish you all well. And of course, I wish I wish a POP well um, with its um, research endeavors. I am so sure we can all do uh, or we can have a fair share in achieving the targets or goals of uh, POP in terms of research productivity. So again, thank you very much. And of course, if you want to connect with me, these are my um, 
uh, my links. You can email me in my personal email or in my institutional email. Um, this is my LinkedIn account. If you want to connect with me professionally, if you want to read my papers, you can go to my research data account, my Sco Google Scholar. This is my ORCID number, my Scopus ID, and my Web of Science researcher ID, and of course, my Mendeley accounts.